Now, I don't know how much people use this, but I'm gonna give you the one tip I'd love for somebody to give me. <laughs> and this is having this kind of hooks there for cups in the kitchen. Uh, you can even do this kind, but these ones are more expensive and they're more durable. You cannot move them as easily, but these ones you screw into the wood. So, as you just saw, I screw it into the wood and I hang the light, the LED light that I need for when it's dark and I'm still here. Oh my gosh, so much trouble. Wow. Hi, Mama. How are you? Hi, Clara. How's life? How was your night as a single woman? How do you feel about it? How do you feel your kids did? Not so great? Okay, they'll be fine. And I can only milk with two hands from the back, but with a mason jar, I have to be super precise or I make a mess and I waste milk, so I try not to. I'm waiting for a little bucket that I ordered a while back, I've sent back. And so now I'm doing the best as I can with this. Now I'm gonna start machine milking them, but right now we're doing hands milking and that should be okay with all of them which is something I still wanted to do with first fresheners I wanted to make sure that they were okay have milk being hand milk and today is the first day I separated the kids after uh, those few days of rest they had with their moms at night so I spent the time teaching them that they needed to start eating so I've been pushing a lot more hay and grain and crushing alfalfa pellets because they're huge and giving it to them just so they know that they will have that available inside their stall. Okay, so Clara milked two cups and she still has a little bit more but she's holding back so I'm going to let her go with her kids so she really wants to go feed. And uh, we'll see who our next vo next volunteer is. Go, Annabelle. You wanna come? You wanna come in? Come here. This way. This way, Mama. Can't go any other way. So here's Annabelle. I was kind of worried that she wasn't feeling up much, or that she wasn't producing enough. Let me go get another paper towel. Uh, because. Her udder looks so empty all the time for the last few days. So I was also doing this to kind of test the waters and see if she was producing milk. Because, you know, there's a strong possibility that it's only that her kids, her kids are eating more, which I think it's the case. But we'll see how much she gives us today. The one thing I really like about Annabelle is the skin in her udder. Like, I like Clara's udder out of everyone that I'm milking right now. She is the one that I like her udder the most. But Annabelle, you barely touch her skin. Like, you barely touch. And I think you're able to see, like, one of the twins has a very similar skin. But um, what happens is you barely touch her skin and the milk comes out. And it's a combination of two things. That she lets her milk down. And the other thing is that her skin really is so soft that you need to put no pressure on it. So I kind of enjoy that. Milking her because I can get her done faster than anybody else. And I've considered selling her many times just because of her udder not being the greatest. But if there's something I'm gonna say right now is I I am glad I didn't because with time her udder has been improving so much it really is unbelievable that this dough has you know is 
that she still has this pattern, but that it changed so much. Uh, she, her feet were tiny as a first freshener, but I'm telling you, tiny. And I've read that yes, they do get longer as kids nurse and as you milk them, you know, either or or both. But I never thought about how much longer they could get. I'm glad I kept her. She is a really good doe. She produces beautiful kids. Every year she's the one that always amazes me because she always has like okay. the most beautiful okay. patterns. She's bold, she's blue-eyed. But in the end, you want a good milker, a good producer. And that's what I'm getting out of Annabelle after her third freshening. This is her third freshening. But now I'm starting to see that, yeah, otter can improve with time. And if you pair them with a right, with a right buck, with a great otter behind him, then it's, that really will make a difference. Let's go! 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 let us go now Gaia is my overachiever as far as milking. She is the one that has the same texture adder as Annabelle. But I don't know if Brie doesn't have that same texture though because I'm telling you, um, sometimes I just push on the adder to move her or something and the milk comes out. Like that. It comes out that easily. And again, it's because the texture of her skin is a little bit softer than the rest or compared to Clara so I think that's a really good improvement even though this is really hard to judge a first freshener you know at least the skin is something that is they're gonna keep it's not that that's gonna change as far as teeth placement that can get better as far as how long their teats are, that gets better with nursing and with milking. But I do like the improvement on the adder texture. Now, I think that they could use a little bit more of a medial li uh, ligament, you know, the one that goes in the middle of the adder. But I think that other than that, they have a pretty good adder. Now, Sometimes you see those otter that are kind of uh, longer and they look a little bit more mature in younger dogs. They do not have that. But what they have is a lot of height. They have great attachments. Like their otter, instead of being in like a V shape, this part down here, it's like a U. They're very, um, their attachments are great. That's why their otters kind of pop out and to the front. Uh, as you can see, Gaia is being a super good girl now that I've trained her for, you know, just a few times really. I didn't have to do a lot more than that. She's been doing pretty good. Now, once she starts to get bored or when she wants more food that I don't want to give her because she has there, but she's just stubborn, then she starts to get a little bit more fidgety, but that's kind of expected. Some of those are just like that, and I deal with it as I can. So overall, their otters, at least Gaia's, I like. I like that they are very round and very high, but I'm pretty happy with the way that she's behaving right now. She still has a lot of milk that I need to milk out. But she's a really good mom. She holds back whatever she wants for her kids. Whenever you're ready, we'll keep milking, okay? And then whenever I say, then you can go off. I know. That's how it works. Okay. I know. You choose. 
Do we stay here for a long time or do we stay here for a few more minutes? And you'll be a good girl. It's up to you. Up to you. Up to you. You think the life is so hard for you, but it's not. It's not really hard. I know. We're doing this, okay? We're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. We're doing this. We're doing this. She's almost done. I mean, she's almost uh, ready to go. She gave me almost the same that she did last time. But I'm not gonna let her win because she has a very strong personality. She wants to be a herd queen, but she wants to boss me around. So I'm not gonna let her do that. Very lovingly, I'm not gonna let her do that. She's gonna have to... And as she's doing this, I am thinking to myself, only good. And I won't let her out until I drop, until I stop touching the other and say, okay, you're done. That's the last part of training that she needs to understand. She's still letting her milk down. I'm still milking her quite a bit. Meaning the stream. You know how they, when they start to pull back, the stream gets thinner and thinner and eventually the, the teeth won't fill. So this, I mean, you can see it's not a lot, but for the few seconds that I've been keeping her there, and again, this is teaching her a lot more than the milk that I'm getting. This is teaching her I'm the leader, I am the boss of you. Okay? Yes, very lovingly, I am the boss of you. And now, you're being a good, such a good girl now. You're chewing the cud and you're listening. And I'm going to let you go just because of that. Okay? You're a good, good girl. Good mama. Good baby, good milker, yes ma'am, you're just learning, you're a good, good girl. Hmm. Oh, now for doing that, we need to stay a little bit longer, okay, we need to, I'm sorry. Now what I'm expecting to see from her girl, which is the little black girl that was the first one born, I am hoping to see a better, um, again, the ligament that goes in between, here in the middle. I'm hoping that's a little bit tighter than hers. Hers right now, she's the first freshener. She's only been freshened for what, four weeks? So it will change, but I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing. Okay, now you're being a good girl. So it's time to, for you to go move on to children. You know, being a goat outside, doing all the goaty things. Thank you, though. I love having you here. You're getting better and better every day. We're coming this way. This way. Good job. You, you want to get in here? Okay. Look, well, you're taking forever to get here, so I'm sorry. She's really full. And... Another thing that I learned that I did not know that was either, you know, a bad thing 
or a good thing or something that could change is the pocket, the front ligaments. You know how sometimes if you look at the LS, LA score, you see that they lose a lot of points if they have a pocket in the front. Well, I was talking to this breeder and she was saying that that pocket usually goes away if they have good capacity uh, they usually goes away and a couple of freshenings so Briere Gaia doesn't have it but Briere does have it um, she does have a little pocket and that pocket is tiny in the front and uh, I'm gonna try to put a picture on this screen so you can see what I'm talking about but basically it's a little bit of skin that folds in and it's not supposed to be bad but it basically that should be filled in with milk now Annabelle had that pocket the first year and Annabelle has nothing to do with this girl so Annabelle is their aunt so not really um, you know, directly, I guess, connected to this girl. But Annabelle had that pocket and I was really disappointed when I saw it. I talked to this breeder and she was saying, well, you know what? If they have a good capacity, if they're good producers, I should say, that means they have the capacity to fill that up. So, I gave Annabelle a couple more chances and like this year she doesn't have the pockets. Like she's able to fill it with milk. So if you have a first freshener with a pocket in the front, then don't worry about it. It could be something that will be fixed within two to three freshenings if they have the ability to produce that much milk. Mocha loves to make a big deal about being away from her kids, okay? She loves to do that. But when I am letting in, letting out whoever is on the stand and letting whoever is by the door in, she's, she's there, but she's not by the entrance. She's kind of towards where the hinges are of the door and she knows that the door opens outward. So whoever is by the door, by the entrance, by the part where I open the door, she knows that's the one that is gonna come in. And she sits by the hinges, like crying and looking sad. And I'm like, listen, you chose to not come in because she could have pushed these girls out of the way, Guy and Briere, and get in here. But no, she runs to the outside, crying like a little girl about, having baby with her, about everyone else having grain and her not. She either hasn't got it yet, she's still not used to this routine, this new routine with this milking room here, or she's just... I think she's just stubborn and she wants to do whatever she wants to do. She wants to come in, but she doesn't really want to come in. Come on! Come on, Bria. Let's go! No, do not get close to my milk. Oh no, she's gonna drop my milk.